Honda recently gave us the chance to make our wildest pickup truck dreams come true and to trick out a bunch of their new Ridgeline trucks. In this series, you're going to see what I and the tested team, that's Norm, Simone, Sean, Kishore, and Frank, came up with. Let's get started. Kishore, what do you got? You know those beautiful images from the ISS of the Earth at night? Oh, where the city's all lit up and everything? I love those. I want to shoot that but they're not letting me aboard the ISS. I asked, they said no, for sure. You, you sure you asked enough? I did, I actually put in the application, and no. They, okay, so you're gonna have to do it terrestrially bound. I have to do it from Earth, and I've teamed up with some Stanford aerospace engineers. Okay. They're gonna help us launch a weather balloon. That's awesome. Yeah, and they have an advanced weather balloon design that's gonna let us get to about 100,000 feet. Uh, and they had this really interesting idea that we're gonna do the launch at night, which as far as we can tell, hasn't been done here in the Bay Area before. Oh, really cool. Okay, and so all of this functionality of a weather balloon, your payload, the stuff in it for photographing, and I guess telemetry to find it later, all has to be built into the bed. Absolutely, and we have a really tight weight restriction of 12 pounds. We need help designing the payload. Making it really, really lightweight. Really lightweight, but also it's a first mission of its kind. We have to make it epic. Okay. And when I think first mission of its kind, I only think of one thing, the Apollo mission. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm in. Um, let's get started building. All right, Adam. For sure. Here's the mock of the cap command capsule. All right, and you have set me up with this amazing 3D reference of the actual thing. Yeah, for the 47th anniversary of its return to Earth, they made a fully 3D rendering of the actual command module. Insane, it's beautiful. Okay, yeah. so you wanna do something akin to this paint job. Exactly, so we wanna be as close as possible. This is actually to scale right. uh, of the module. The engineers have built a 3D printed chassis that's gonna fit in the bottom of this capsule right here. Yeah. And in it is gonna be a special radio transmitter that's gonna be tracking GPS location. And we're gonna put a radio transmitter on top of the Honda designed, hooked up to a laptop, and we'll be able to track it in real time. Nice. Even better, they wrote custom software to map their trajectory of it. So we'll be within about a kilometer of its landing based on wind speed there. Brilliant. How are you keeping the electronics warm at altitude? It's gonna be cold up there. Yeah, it's gonna be negative 40 Celsius up at the peak, which is a little bit chilly. I might point out the negative 40 Celsius is also negative 40 Fahrenheit. It's where the two graphs cross. I know, it's a perfect <laughs> number for us. Uh, well, we have two things. We're gonna power all the electronics inside by using USB power that we're gonna charge in the truck before we launch it. Okay. And what we've done is create these special sort of heating pads that are gonna shunt off the, some of the power from the source mm -hmm. to create essentially a heating source that's gonna surround the electronics. So we're using every spare bit of power that's generated for every purpose, both for powering the electronics and any excess for generating some heat inside the compartment. That's quite a NASA approach, right? To like leave no, no resource <laughs> unutilized within the mission parameters. Hey, if we're going to do this, we have to do it the NASA way. That's really cool. And these are the markings for your parachute releases. Okay, so as long as I stay clear of these, everything else can be aestheticized, is that right? Absolutely. This looks like fun. Awesome. Um, give me an hour.
my god. Dude, this is incredible. I even included your handles, but that's hollow styrene, and so I think that's only a few grams worth of extra weight. I think we can handle the extra few grams for how awesome this is. I also gave you uh, scorch marks on the back. Those are beautiful. On the bottom. Very, um, like, actually, very accurate scorch marks. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick and dirty, but it's uh, reasonably aestheticized for a trip to space or near space. I mean, we are going to crash it from 100,000 feet to the ground, so I don't know how pretty it has to be. It's going to exactly. get some damage, but this is so beautiful. I, oh. uh, I hope you're happy. I love it. And the candy red on yeah, the top. Yeah, it, it has to be red on top. I know that might not be accurate, but it pleases me aesthetically. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. No problem. Man. With our payload capsule fabricated and finished, we load up our gear into the Honda Ridgeline and drive to our launch site for the early morning launch. Okay, it's 3 a.m., early Sunday morning. Uh, I've seen all this gear around the cave. What's going on today? So we're putting together a weather balloon to take up a set of camera gear up to about 85,000 feet with the team from Night Crew Labs. It's the edge of space. Edge of space. Near a tested is going to space. All How right. can you not be excited about that? Very excited. So what we have set up is a couple different payloads, including the Apollo 11 capsule inspired payload that we're gonna send ripping through the fog here through the night to image the San Francisco Bay Area at night and then catch sunrise as it's rising up through the through the fog. So I see all the gear has been loaded and the team from Night Collapse are here and you're gonna chat with them about how this morning's gonna go. Absolutely, you ready for launch? Yeah, let's do it. So let's take a look at what's inside the ridge line. We need a way to get this up into near space, right? Right. So balloon? Balloon plus those two big helium tanks. Okay, helium yes. I got. We're yeah. gonna get the lift. Yeah. Tell me about this balloon. Sure, yeah. So uh, this guy here is a 3,000 Graham meteorological balloon, weather balloon. It's basically a really big latex balloon that effectively we just fill up with helium and it'll go to strands. How big is it gonna get? Uh, so on the ground, it's a, about eight feet or so, but it gets, it expands as it goes up. So at burst, it's about 30 feet. So what are we sending up? So yeah, we got, uh, we got two stages. The first, the capsule, and we got the second stage, which is gonna be just below the balloon. Uh, so right here, we got a styrofoam box, and inside it, we have a good, a good set of hardware here. A lot yeah, of there's a lot of cameras in here. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at the Apollo 11 command capsule inside the yeah. embed trunk. Whoa. Can we lift it out? Yeah. All right. Careful. Let's, do, let's work together here. What? So this is a lot heavier than when Adam handed to me the first time. Tell <laughs> yeah. me what's in here. Sure, yeah, so we, uh, we've we tricked it out. Uh, so, you know, when Adam made this, effectively it's just a styrofoam uh, co cover, the heat shield, the nose cone, and so all in here you can see we got one, two, three. We've got uh, three drone parachutes. I also see a transmitter in there. Yes. What is that transmitter doing? Yeah, so uh, that transmitter is telling us it's uh, the Apollo capsule's location as it's kind of going up and back down. Using GPS? Uh, no, this is using radio, but mm -hmm. we also have a GPS system, so we kind of have a duplicate redundant system to tell us where it is. So we have a balloon. We have the helium to go in the balloon. We have a secondary payload that has all of our camera equipment in mm -hmm. it. We have a radar deflector, and then we have the big boy, the Apollo 11 command capsule, uh, outfitted with this computer system on board, the brick computer system. Uh, are we ready to go? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've got everything we need. Uh, we've got our, our people here and, and we're ready to set up and launch. All right, let's start filling up those balloons okay. and get a countdown going. Yeah. Sure, where are we at right now? We're about 45 minutes in, and so far, we have a balloon partially inflated. It may look fully inflated, but when it's fully inflated, it's actually gonna lift about 27 to 30 pounds. And what we just did right now is just made a switch over to a second tank of helium right. to finish the inflation. And remember, we're trying to actually do something a little bit different. Most balloon launches, they get up and let the balloon just burst and let it go in free fall. We're doing a much more controlled launch this way. When it gets to about 20 kilometers high, or about 85,000 feet, 
we're actually going to trigger a mechanism that's going to melt the rope um, that connects the balloon to the payloads. So the balloon's gonna float away. And the payload's gonna And the drop. payload's gonna drop. And that's gonna trigger the par parachute on the first payload. And then as it falls down to a certain altitude, the Apollo 11 capsule parachutes are gonna launch. And all that precision is so we can get this sunrise with all those cameras. Everything needs to be timed perfectly. Night Crew Lab's team have marked out a trajectory and we're gonna launch in about 15 minutes. Yeah, here we go. So we're just about set for launch. We're just getting the final payload configuration done. The balloon is all full and you can see it's about to pull one of our engineers out to space. So it's just about go time in just about one minute. Second. All right, we gotta pack up quickly so we can catch up to it. We're getting up there. So, so you're gonna do uh, onto 580 East. Okay. Point one one six. We put it. We are getting really close. Dude. Repeat, over. Where are you at? Where are you? That's right, yeah, you're right. This is the parachute. We're gonna take a look. Wait, we got a little. It's amazing it landed on the water, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be really cold. We've never had a session done. All right, Kishore, apparently. You have a story to tell me. Yes, we had a successful launch. Excellent. I brought you back a. I brought you back a present. You want to see? Yes. It made it back. Ah! Oh, she survived. It looks great. In fact, it has basically no damage to it for a flight to set over seventy thousand feet. Wow. It looks great. The parachutes that... deployed. Everything kind of worked as we wanted it to. It got the shots. We got some shots. You want to see some footage? I'd love to. So we put these red LEDs in the top. That's, so they, that's our footage? Yeah, this is our footage. This is about um, six to seven miles above San Francisco right wow. now. Wow. And this basically takes us to the edge of, edge of space. We get up just under uh, 70,000 feet with a capsule before we cut it down and it starts to fall back towards Earth. That is so sweet. So you can see the curvature. Yes, the curve. I told you. And this is um, what you're seeing here. That's sunrise. Amazing. I love that the simplicity of this build with the magnificence of the footage that it got. That's excellent. All in all, that is a 100% successful launch. Well done. We got the footage. That's beautiful.